Hello, in this episode I show you how to use a trick in Photoshop to simulate a non-exposure shot without filter and without tripod. Come and join me. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs and welcome to episode 43 of my Photography Lightroom and Photoshop Tips. My name is Serge Ramelli and I am a French photographer living in Paris, France. Viva la France! Hello guys, I'm back from Israel where I shot over 1200 photos and I will publish some in the next days. I love that country. It's beautiful. It's the first time I've been there and it's really great. And I actually want to show you a trick. Um, two weeks ago, I showed a photo of Montmartre and uh, a way to use a clone and stem tool to take people out using layer and masking. And people have been writing in a comment saying, hey, there is a much easier trick. Try using the stack modes in Photoshop and the smart object. And I was like, what? What's the stack modes? What's the smart object? I didn't know nothing about it. So I watched a few tutorials on it and I'll show you a trick that will speed up a lot the processing of taking out tourists. And I further investigated the stack mode and found another way we can use them to simulate lone exposure. The whole idea is this. You're in front of a waterfall and you only have your camera. You have no tripod and you don't have an ND filter to make lone exposure. Well, you can just put your camera in manual mode, stand there and take like 10, 12 shots of very sharp shots, each of them, and then use the stack mode to simulate the lone exposure. But let me show you how this is done. Okay, before we get into this tip of this week, I want to show you something that uh, uh, two weeks ago, I, I showed you how to use a clone stem tool to take people out of a photo. And I, I did that with layers. And actually, people in the comments of the video on YouTube uh, gave me a trick that I didn't know, that I will show you today, which will speed up tremendously the process, where you have a lot less of clone stem tool to do. Uh, so first thing you retouch, this is all the three photos that are retouched. I retouched the first one. I synchronized my retouch on the, on the two other ones. I'm going to take all three, right click, edit, and um, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, once it's open in Photoshop, I click open anyway. Uh, so they open each one on their own layer. This is the same procedure than I did, but what I showed you was very complex. I'll show you a trick which is which uh, people left me in a comment, which is a lot easier. And especially if you've got tons of photos, because if I, I should have stayed there with my tripod and just keep on shooting and shooting and shooting. So first step is always to make sure that your photo is aligned. One of the best way to do that is just to, uh, yeah, just to make sure. If you have some doubt, you just click on all three photos. You go to uh, edit, auto align layers. It's very important for this to work that the photos are completely aligned. Okay, that's perfect. Then it's just a two steps. First step is right click convert to smart object. So this will convert all three photos into one group, which is a smart object. And then you go into layers, uh, smart object, stack mode, it's a bit complex and you go to medium. Okay. So that's smart object, stack mode, medium, and check this out. What this is going to do is going to average. You see how it, I show you with command Z before and after it's, it's took out, uh, this person, uh, all these two people just went almost out. I mean, there's still a lot of job to do, but it's a good starting point. And the thing is, if you keep on taking photos and photos and photos, eventually you can use this technique and you take everybody out. So two step first is first step is if I go back, it's just to take all your photos, align them, convert them into a smart object and then use this stack mode. I think that's only works with Photoshop 6.5 extended or Photoshop CS6. Now, then I got interested into the stack mode and I want to show you something else. And that's the main tutorial for today. So command W, I'm going to not save this, but that was just a little trick. Um, I'll show you a way where you can, um, if, if you want to do some long, long exposure shots and you don't have an ND filter and you're in front of a river or something, this is a trick where you can approach it. It's not a, it's not perfect, but it's so easy to do. Uh, the whole idea is that I, I took this waterfall and I took, uh, well, a whole bunch of photos of it. And I was not with a tripod, it was handheld. 
And so I took uh, in manual mode so that every shot had the same exposure. So all I have to do now is correct just one shot. So you know my techniques. I'm going to open up the shadows, bring down the highlights, uh, open up the whites until I see some dots, bring down the blacks. Okay. And um, maybe just add a bit of vibrance, add a bit of clarity. Um, one thing that's important is click on remove chromatic aberration and on about profiles correction. I'm going to do some post crop vignetting. Yeah, S something like that. I can check camera calibration uh, landscape to see if it's a better color. Yeah, it's more colorful. Uh, also, a lot of people are asking me when they go to Lightroom on camera calibration, they don't have the same choice than I have. They hardly have any choice. And that is two reasons. The first reason is because you're not retouching a RAW file, you're retouching a JPEG. Camera calibration only works with um, RAW files. And second, camera calibration is based on a manufacturer. If you have a Canon camera, it's not going to be the same ones than a Nikon camera. So I, with Canon, I always go between Adobe Standard or Camera Landscape. But anyways, that's the first idea. So now I'm going to take all my photos and click on Synchronize. Make sure check all, all is synchronized and I'm going to correct all the photos in the same way. Then I'm going to right click edit and um, open as layers in Photoshop. Okay. Now the reason I want to do that is because, okay, I'm going to click on open anyway. I want to align them. I don't want to convert them to smart object because there is also an option to directly open them up as a smart object. I don't want to do that because this was shot and held, no tripod. So there's a lot of variation between the photos. So it's very important uh, to uh, use the auto align feature first. So let's just hold on a second. I'm going to put this on pause until they are all loaded into Photoshop. Okay, so they are all loaded into Photoshop. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight photos. Now check it out. If I just move the first uh, photo, take it off and on, see a they are not aligned. This was not shot on a tripod. So I'm going to select all by pressing the shift key and all the layers. And then I'm going to go into edit, auto align layers, auto, okay. And that's going to make sure that all the layers is aligned. That's first step, very important. Then, uh, so that you can see the before and after, I'm just going to take the top layer and I'm going to com command J it to put it on its own layer. I'm going to turn it off. It's just to show you the before and after. So then I'm taking back all my layers. I'm going to right click and convert to smart object. So I'm creating just one smart object. And then I'm going to go into layers, smart object, stack mode, as we did before. But this time we're not going to use a medium. We are going to use mean. And mean is uh, works just better for that lone exposure look. So let's click on mean. And check it out. It's got a bit this long exposure. Look at the water. I'll show you the before and after. That's the before. Let's zoom in. That's the before. And that's the after. See how it sort of gave a long exposure look to it. And uh, so if you are in front of a waterfall and you don't have a tripod, that's a way to do that. So then all I have to do now is take my crop tool uh, by pressing C. I'm just going to crop out anything that I don't want and I can finish my retouching uh, in Photoshop. So I'm going to finish this up in Photoshop instead of Lightroom for a change. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do, I'm going to create a blank layer that I'm going to put that I'm called, called Dodge and Burn. I'm going to put this in overlay mode. And you know, if you follow my tutorials, you know that an empty layer in overlay mode, if you take a brush, uh, and you, I'm going to take uh, press X to have the white color as the fo first color. And then I'm going to go into um, I'm going to go into uh, opacity and make it around 20%, something like that. Okay, and now, and now, I'm going to paint with white uh, on the water just to make it pop a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to. It's going to help simulate this, uh, this effect. Now, as you can see, I'm exaggerating it and you can really see the lines here. Okay. I'm just doing it really fast and, uh, 
and voila now this looks awful you see that's before and after and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and um, go into filter blur Gaussian blur and I'm gonna blur the hell out of that of this brush strokes so that they cannot be seen so 106 yeah pixels something like that so uh, it's just you know it's just making this water even brighter you know and uh, making the lights uh, yeah if you think it's too strong you can just turn it down with the opacity that's one way of doing it okay but check it out you see it's very sharp uh, except where the water is you know it, it really did a bit this lone exposure trick so I think it's really fun and last but not least I want to make um, you know what I'm gonna flatten this image layers uh, flatten image okay and I'm gonna reduplicate the layer put this one into uh, multiply because I want to make this whole thing dark and I'm gonna do my own vignetting the problem with doing vignetting in Lightroom and this is being corrected in Lightroom 5 is that the vignetting that you can do is only equally the same everywhere around I prefer I want to put the attention on the on the, the waterfall so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my marquee tool rectangle marquee tool and put it around the waterfall just like that now this is a very high-res photo so then I'm gonna go into select modify feather I'm gonna feather 400 pixels and then I'm gonna press delete okay and this made a, a vignette exactly where I wanted now this is a bit too strong so I'm just going to turn down the opacity but I'm going to leave it that way you see uh, getting people to go really into the waterfall so yeah that was the that's the basic idea of this before I say goodbye I just want to show you that if you go to my website photosearch.com and you go into English tutorials you've got about 11 courses each course cost about ten dollars and if you for example Lightroom for retouching if you click on the course you will come to a new page that's going to give you exactly what you get for this ten dollars all the before and afters uh, so you can really see like that's all the before and afters that is one two three four five projects um, and you will get all the raw files it's about two hours of video that's just one course for ten dollars so for example for Lightroom I've got the Lightroom 4 quick start the, the Lightroom 4 quick start is just a two hours course that will get you started in all the modules of Lightroom importing photos retouching your photos uh, making books making websites everything the whole shabam that's the Lightroom 4 quick start course then you've got the Lightroom 4 retouching the Lightroom 4 retouching is just retouching projects all we do we don't do books we don't do website we just retouch everything from start to the end and if you click on the Lightroom for retouching you will see the exact before and after projects uh, the Lightroom for retouching uh, this one it's called the Lightroom for retouching 2 uh, or travel retouching which you can find here if you click on it you will see what it is It's basically another five or six projects of just retouching from the end to start you know we don't go into anything than just pure retouching and so you get all these three courses uh, instead of paying them each $30 you get it for $25 and when you click on this basically all you get is the the, the video files and the raw files the video files will explain you how to retouch them and the raw files you can just redo the retouching follow along and have a good understanding of Lightroom okay so if you like that uh, please um, help me share this uh, uh, podcast to your friends and if you do share it I will send you the raw files that I've used uh, the waterfall raw files that I've used in this episode all these raw files it's uh, so you can play around with it and make your own loan exposure and your own retouch of that waterfall taken next to the Dead Sea uh, in Israel which I shot last week it's a very nice place in Israel so I'll give you all these raw files all you have to do is share this podcast to your uh, friends on Facebook or Google Plus you know wherever you want send me a little email the email should be there on the screen and I'll send you all this raw file so you can play around with it for free thank you very much for your help and I'll see you next week let's get back to the studio okay guys so I hope you like that tutorial as I said in the videos if you share this podcast to your friends or Google Plus or Twitter or Facebook whatever social network you have I'll give you for free all the raw files from that beautiful waterfall in 
the Dead Sea in Israel. I'll give you all the raw files so you can train with them and try to retouch them and make the best photo that you can. Thank you very much for your help and I'll see you next week. Au revoir. Yeah.